let's take a look at the lineup for both teams. Changes, Kate Maloney, she's out. Lanise Popgita is out as well for the Thunderbirds. Yeah, so we've seen Hannah Mundy slip into that centre position for the Vixens there. Um, you know, and her and Lizzie Watson could potentially play around that other way as well. And we're um, obviously looking at Lucy Austin coming into that goal shooting position for the Thunderbirds straight into the starting seven. So really looking forward to seeing what she can do as that strong hold, holding goal shooter down the Thunderbirds attack end. And we did see Lucy Austin in the Team Girls Cup. Another opportunity for a young and up and coming player. She's getting ready. And here we go. Straight away, Weston gets a hand in there. Garrett finds Horges. McDonald. Has to go back. Petty, outstanding in defence so far this season. Austin. Oh, and a great first shot from her. Just that little balk. Surely that will uh, keep open her account and she'll be underway. Exciting start for Lucy Austin. That big smile on her face. And a nice strong take from Kumwenda there. Ripped that in with two hands. Austin matches the other Austin. Yeah, that, that's going to be confusing today, isn't it? <laughs> Dwan across to Horges. Strong drive. What a start. A confident start from the Thunderbirds. A really great sweep across the circle we just saw from uh, Tipper Dwan. Nice and strong. That's what you want. Mundy tries to get it over Mel McDonald's hands. Gets another go. Austin back to Watson. And Lizzie Watson just finding herself at home on the top of that circle there, as she does so often. Keep an eye on that matchup between Hannah Petty and Liz Watson. The two captains going oh, as Ryan is just flying. <laughs> You're right, the two captains going up against each other. Yeah, so it'll be great to see throughout this game, you know, where where that leadership comes from. Obviously, with, with Hannah Petty doing a really great job this season. Nine intercepts for Hannah Petty across the first five rounds. She's sitting fourth on the intercept <laughs> tally. That's unusual, isn't it, for a wing defence? It is unusual, but she's clearly playing, you know, she plays that shutdown role, but she also turns over a lot of ball for her defence end. As does Sterling, as does Wilson. And here they go again, the Thunderbirds, another turnover. Porges has to go back. They find McDonald. Dwan looks in, can Austin get it? She steadies. And really smart then from Lucy Austin. We saw Joe Weston with those really big hands up, altering that vision. And Austin actually saw that that was going to struggle to go in over those big hands. So she offered just out to the side of those big hands so that um, the, feed could, the feeder could see her. Poor just everyone stuck. Garrett gets it through to Dwan. McDonald bounces it. Austin, safe hands. And as easy as that, her third already for the game. Yeah, I'm, I'm liking what I'm seeing down that, that attack end already. I'm sure it's just going to build and grow in confidence as the game goes on. Maddie Brown rounds out our commentary team. Maddie, are you loving what you're seeing? I am. I think, you know, in comparison to the Vixens at the moment, just with that shift and change with Mundy on, they're getting a little bit crowded in that attack end, struggling to find that space, all leading to the same side at the one time. On the flip side, you see Adelaide, the attackers out the front doing a lot of work, Austin being a really strong target for them. But watch them just transition. Extra players having to do a little bit of extra load to help bring it all the way down. As we just see an error there through that transition. Just going over the side. Mundy to Watson. Watson looks straight into Kumwenda. The jostling for position happening between both goalers and defenders. 
the safe passage of that ball just going over the top to Kamwenda. The mismatch there with Garrett on uh, on that holding shooter. So it's a bit safer than going over <laughs> Sterling with all of her bags full of intercepts. As they try and go over Eddie, she says no chance. But Thunderbird still in control. Austin out of the circle. Straight across to Dwan. Maddox tries to fly. That is 100% shooting for the Adelaide Thunderbirds. I like what I'm seeing from Emily Mannix early, though. She is definitely, um, you know, she's putting a little bit of fear into the Thunderbirds' attack line. She's had a, had a crack at a couple of balls now, so might just make them think twice next time. The intimidation factor that the defenders can really add to a game. I surely love that. <laughs> <laughs> I remember, uh, Bianca, you used to... Uh, make your running steps quite loud to never like, to, <laughs> to scare the mid quarter. I wasn't as skillful as these defenders out here on court right now. I could hear you coming. <laughs> Gorgeous. They try and look in now. Dwan looks in, but Weston hands over. That's what you want from your goal defense. They do call it over a third. Yeah, so it might just be where Joe Weston actually gained possession. I know she had taken a couple of steps. Maybe if we can. We'll see if we do get yeah. a replay of that. The Vixens, though, they want the ball back. Austin trying her hardest in defence. Dwan. McDonald. You can see Lucy Austin's arm in the background, just putting her hand up there. She's ready and she wants it. We know the Thunderbirds have had defensively they've been so strong but the Vixens their strength is they don't turn over the ball they've got the lowest turnovers of any team in the competition they do they're really safe with the ball they you know they work so hard and they're really patient with getting that ball in as well so um, you know the ball skills that are on show from the Vixens they're always a really low turnover they play quite short and sharp as well not really having those longer lines that the defenders can kind of cut through and, and get those intercepts. So, um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see whether the highest turnover team, um, <laughs> you know, the Thunderbirds who get the most turnovers can get many off, um, off the Vixens. McDonald chases it up, keeps it in, flicks it across. And to the other side. <laughs> oh, just great backup. Out to Dwan, she's on her own. And a great just little um, little triangle there. So Dwan just opened up the angle for that feed to come in. And a nice easy one for Austin. Reliable, so reliable under the post from Lucy Austin. As you see Kathy Fellows and Tanya Obst on your screen, the Thunderbirds coaching panel. Kathy Fellows, a Victorian over there coaching. There she is to the left of your screen. Watson, Vixens, what can they do? Lay up from Kumwenda. Can't quite sink it. Lucky to get that throw in, I think, then. Austin finds Mundy on the edge. Across they go. Garrett gets a hand to it. And the Vixens get another go. They will have to reset. We did speak a lot about Latanya Wilson and Shamira Sterling in the pre-match, but Matilda Garrett has been on the court doing an incredible job herself. She really does, and, and the tendency for her to play in that first half of the game, we talk about some of the defensive pressure being built. She's doing that work. She's putting those, um, you know, doing a lot of that hard yards, and then in the second half, sometimes you actually reap the benefits of, of that hard work that's happening early in the game. Gorgeous, out early for the centre pass. McDonald goes high to Austin. Strong take. Already strong connection between the Thunderbirds attackers. Mundy tries to get it away quickly. The Vixens, they want to fly in attack. Eddie finds Mundy. Oh. Sterling comes out. And a great strong take. I think Mundy could see that she was potentially going to have, have a body on her during that. 
really strong take from Mundy. We've seen the backup on the transverse line across all games. It, that's so important, isn't it, for an attack line to be able to have that backup. Yeah, and just to know that they're there at that third second, you want you want to give your attack end the two, two and a half seconds to become free for you to go forward. Austin gets a hand, great tip in. Mundy picks it up, Vixens, they're back. You can hear the crowd here at John Kane Arena. And a oh, triple Linda. play. <laughs> she said, double play's not enough. I want a third. <laughs> and the Vixens bring it back to within one. Here's our Harvey Norman replay. Here at Austin. Always great to see an attacker put in all of that effort in defence. Watson to Mundy, across the court to Austin. Mundy takes the drive, back and forth. That was really well set up then, as I'm sure Kira Austin says that was a pass <laughs> over the top. <laughs> really well set up. They got all cramped over on one side of the court and then just that long ball to release over to the end, which opened up the other side for the Vixens and, and a nice cut and drive from Austin. Maddie, what are you noticing? Looking at the Vixens' defence here, they've been really good at shutting down the middle channel. They've also been chucking on a bit of a wall on the centre pass, which is making Dwan have to sit back a little bit on the circle. So check that out the next time the, uh, the Thunderbirds have a centre pass. Check out the Vixens' defence, how active they are, how much Joe Weston's being able to fly out the front, which is hopefully where they're going to gain some ball back. As you heard, the siren for the Power Five. So Suncorp Super Shot now is in play. Kumwenda is in the white arc right now. Worth two. And the crowd, they just showed their disappointment, didn't they? <laughs> they, they love the super shot. They wanted the super shot to sing. <laughs> and we see Latanya Wilson in there at wing defence already. She's replaced Hannah Petty. I wonder if we might see Hannah Petty jumping back on in that centre bib at the moment. Vixen's back in attack. Mannix and Weston getting us underway. There's Hannah Petty on your screen, the Thunderbirds captain. Just providing that leadership and, and a lot of voice from the sideline at the moment. We do know in previous games, Tanya Obst is starting to use her bench a lot more. Is that helpful for the Thunderbirds? Do you think that works in their favour? I think if the players are really... Oh, yeah. well kept in by Watson. Yeah. <laughs> and, and great backup. Um, I think if the players are all aware of the roles that they play and potentially, I guess, the, t the timing that each of the combinations have, and they can become really seamless, those changes. I, I would like at the moment to see a bit more of a, a settled lineup for, uh, for the Thunderbirds and, and see how they go. But we are seeing a lot of changes and sometimes those changes can have a good impact. High ball into Austin. Dwan has to go back out. There Wils there's Wilson. Ford just looks in. Look at Lucy Austin with her hand up in the air saying, I want it, give it to me. They don't. Dwan takes it herself. But a great strong rebound, which is exactly what you want when you're putting up those two-point shots to have a really strong rebounder under the post. Thunderbirds leading this quarter by one. Kumwenda across to Mundy. Penalty against McDonald. Watson gets to reset. Kumwenda for one. Easy does it. That's 10 from 12 for Maui Kumwenda. Across they go to McDonald. A lot of cross-court passes. Why wouldn't you, though, when you can find Austin in that position? And she just plucks one from over the top of Joe Weston. Huge start for the Thunderbirds attack end. 100% shooting from Tipper Dwan, from Lucy Austin. Weston. Across to Austin. Back to Watson. From Wenda, they try and get shuffle back. <laughs> Look at the pressure from the Thunderbirds defenders. Wilson getting a hand to it. They're making it hard for them. 
And some of that play there that we just saw, B, is it's really safe for them to be able to work the ball into that shooting position. Those really short passes are so hard to be able to pick off for the defenders. Um, the, the Vixens obviously just wanting to work that one a little bit closer. And if we just quickly take a look at our Nissan net point, the match leaders. Now, don't be confused. Adelaide Thunderbirds, Lucy Austin is leading at 28. What a huge start for her. Kira Austin for the Vixens on 21. But majority Vixens way with the Nissan net points at the moment. Here we go, Eddie. Vixens defenders trying to work it out. They've got to go over the top. The Thunderbirds sitting in that middle channel and, and doing a great job of holding up that transition from the Vixens, and they come up with a turnover. So if they can slow it up, slow up the ball um, coming down the court, it gives their defenders a lot more. Oh, so we see a huge take from Sterling. <laughs> Garrett tries to get it over. There's just over 15 seconds left in this first quarter. Scores are even. What can the Thunderbirds do? Dwan. Eddie gets a hand in there, slows it down. As you can see, the umpire calls time. We've got five seconds to play, plenty of time. Here goes Dwan, double defended. Lucy Austin from out of court. They can't do it. Both teams will be wrapped with that start. Scores are even here at John Kane Arena. Stay with us, we've got plenty of action to come. Thunderbirds were talking about how their centre court are getting quite wide, allowing those defenders that opportunity to come and hunt. So Tanya Ops asked for some triangles to work that short ball to get a bit of depth but create that space on the top. She was really impressed with Austin's start. Stand tall, be a really strong presence and try and make Mannix have to defend her the entire time. That's exactly what we've been seeing in that first quarter. So we'll keep an eye on the Vixens' defence now as the Thunderbirds go into attack. Dwan takes the centre pass pretty much right in that centre circle. She's sitting up quite high as they try and go forward. Garrett tries to keep it in. And a really great um, defence from the Vixen centre pass then. Having the, the two backline players come down and really rush through that, um, through that middle third. Mundy balances right on the edge. Little vixen sandwich <laughs> happening down there. <laughs> Garrett out of play. Austin, Kira Austin across to Kumwenda. Aussie Diamond squad member doesn't want to take that shot. She's happy to pass it. <laughs> and the vixen take the lead now by two. Western having a great season also in the Aussie squad for the Commonwealth Games. Watson, another squad member, also the Aussie Diamonds captain. Mundy finds Austin. Great block by Shamira Sterling. Don't you love to see that as a defender? She's already got six this season. That is her seventh block. She's just got incredible elevation and timing on that, doesn't she? <laughs> I think we need the stats. We need everyone's vertical jumps because I think Shamira Sterling and Olivia Lewis for the Vixens would have two of the highest in the competition. Elle McDonough. Oh, Weston just swipes Dwan as she comes through. Lucy Austin being double defended. Doesn't bother her one little bit. Let's have a look at this Harvey Norman replay. Shamira Sterling. Didn't even really get off the ground for that one. Timing it perfectly. Oh, as, as we see Mannix try and come out for another one. Just caught the arm of Tippett one. Stepping call against Lucy Austin. The Thunderbirds, we know they're costly in attack with their turnovers. They haven't been too bad for this first quarter, but they really need to be mindful of that. They really do, and in terms of um, their their turnovers, we see that they haven't actually scored off any of their um, their positive gains at the moment either. So the Vixens getting a gain here and, and making the most of it. Now, now it's their centre pass, so this is what we need to see from the Thunderbirds as well, making the most of the ball that they get as smothering defence by Matilda Garrett. The Thunderbirds are trying to outnumber the Vixens in attack. Wilson. Struggles to hold on to it. 
gorgeous. Can she get it across? They have to go back. Huge amount of defensive pressure being applied by the Vixens. Garrett. A lot of one-on-one -on -one pressure. All the matchups across the court. No one is taking an easy ball. McDonald, she gets an easy one here. Dwan wants it back, standing still. Lucy Austin for her 10th of the game, 100% for Lucy Austin. Here we go, Mundy finds Garrett's hand. Dwan straight up to Austin. Oh. She fumbles, Maddox is there, she picks it up. Weston to Eddie. Miscommunication there. Yeah, just let, let the ball go. Lizzie hadn't quite beaten the two defenders that were on her back. <laughs> it's a physical battle between Latanya Wilson and Liz Watson. It's Kira Austin. So easy. It makes it look so easy. <laughs> Full stretch. Watson gets the centre pass. Back to Eddie. Here we go. Kumwenda. Not confident. And smart here, just, just for a bit of a change of pace. We see if the Vixens hold on to the ball that little, that second longer, sometimes it actually is drawing the umpire's eye to what's going on in the defence. They're getting a contact and they're being able to kind of slow the play down and build it from there. We have a HCF tactical timeout. The Adelaide Thunderbirds have caught it. Let's take a listen to Tanya Ops. You go into goal attack, you come off for a sec. Yep. Um, Maze, you come into wing attack. And we'll leave it like that for now. All right? Um, have a think about the, the J, when we get the J lead. Yeah, you know how you ended up then on top of Earl? The J lead or the Kurt, yeah? I think we can create, use our backspace. Yeah, all right. Think about our centre passes. All right, so we're now we reset. We just reset again. Another chance to reset. Okay, let's get the connections. Just pull them in. Let's go. Yeah, we need go. a short option down there as well. Lots of options. Oh, right. Centre pass. What a great insight we just had. Tanya Obbs talking to her players, making a few changes out there on court. Yeah, we see uh, Maisie Nankerville come in at wing attack. Georgie Horges has shifted across to the goal attack position. And we see Hannah Petty come back on at wing defence. And Wilson, Latanya Wilson into goal defence. McDonald tries to find Austin, but the Vixens get a hand in there. Eddie across to Weston. You can see a sea of pink in that middle channel of the court. Trying to force the Vixens out wide. They find Austin. Wilson, it's a two-on-one in the circle. But Shamira Sterling, she can do anything. <laughs> Watson to Kumwenda, back and forth. Gets herself closer. Steadies and shoots. The Vixens take their lead out by four. Mundy. We look at the shooting stats. The Vixens, a good start, but they'll be wanting better. Yeah, I think they, they definitely will be. And to have that settle in there, we see Kumwenda take, take another one. We quite often see Kumwenda doing the bulk of the shooting. Uh, last week, we saw Kira Austin stepping up a little bit, probably having a bit more volume than what she normally does. So we'll see how that balance kind of works out there. Maddie Brown, a momentum shift. The Vixens are really increasing their lead. They are, and they spoke about that in the timeout. They said, you know, like, after we get a game, let's stay composed with the ball. And in attack, let's have some more punchy options coming up through the centre. In contrast to seeing the Adelaide Thunderbirds having a little bit of disconnect in their attack end, I'd love to see Georgie Hall just get into the circle, kind of get those two defenders back so she can drive up through the centre because they're getting a little bit wide. Oh, great pass from Kung Wenda to Austin. <laughs> And no look, 
Oh, down she goes. Now, Maddie, I wanted to ask you, you talk about those punchy drives in attack, something you always did really well. Explain it. What does it mean? What does it look like? Well, I think it's just all about your timing. Oh, as Air Maddox nearly comes out. You want to have, like, that pulley system, someone coming to the ball, someone going away, creating space. It's, as I said, it's that timing, making sure that you're not all offering at the same time because it's sometimes really hard to make a decision when there's three options at you. So <laughs> making sure you're offering at different times to create not only for yourself but also for your teammates around you. And Georgie Horges just opens her account on the scoreboard. Exactly what you were after, Maddie. <laughs> Weston goes along to Eddie, the defenders, helping out in attack. Mundy. Which option? She has to go across. Wilson gets in. A lucky pickup from the Vixens. Just seems quite slow. Is that a, a patient play by the Vixens or are they confused as to who goes where? I think it is um, patience. It's definitely probably a slower pace than what we're used to seeing from the Vixens. But remember, there's a and one Kate Maloney sitting on a couch back at home who is usually in that attack end. So Hannah Mundy potentially just maybe slowing things down in that attack end. Um, so, so they're finding their kind of groove with a, with a different player out there as well. If you've just joined us, Kate Maloney, the co-captain of the Melbourne Vixens, she is out due to COVID health and safety protocol. Shout out to you, Kate Maloney. And also for the Thunderbirds, their number one shooter. Pot Gita is also out with a knee injury, but Lucy Austin for the Thunderbirds has come in and she's really stamped her authority on this game. 11 from 11, 100%. And Kumwenda, she is 16 from 18, 89% is also showing what she can do. Petty tries to keep it in. She can. Gorgeous. Eddie to stand out of play. Vixens leading by five. Just over six minutes to play in this second quarter. The umpire just clarifying that your arms are out, goalkeeper. Got to have him always down by your side, by your side. <laughs> the natural stance position. Watson to Austin. Back, double play. Can't quite get it there. Sterling, they're very conscious of Sterling and where she's coming around for the ball. And potentially that's why sort of that slower pace as well. Just wanting to sight where the defender is, where the space is that they can feed that ball in safely. And see the footwork from Shamira Sterling, even just on that shot. Always moving, fast feet. Thunderbirds, what can they do? Horges straight across to Nankerville. To Horges at the top. Hands over from Weston. Too close. You've got over your three feet before those hands go in the air. Austin from her happy place. Mundy. Watson to Eddie, up to Kumwenda. They are, it's slow, it's patient play from the Vixens attackers. There doesn't seem to be a whole lot of urgency, it just seems like the Vixens are in control. Just sensing a little bit of frustration, frustration from Sterling there. Well, the difference is, I can feel, is Sterling's used to having so many aerial balls to fly at, and the Vixens are keeping it very low, smartly, strategically, keeping the ball low and away from Wilson and Sterling. Yeah, and that's, you know, when you're playing a team where they've got, they've got their strength is in the air, that is exactly what you want to do. Keep the ball out of the air. Don't allow them um, to, to get the ball in their hands the way that they want, which is causing some of that frustration. And as Watson puts it in the air, yeah, it's safely. <laughs> Thunderbirds through McDonald. Nankerville calling for the ball, demanding the ball. She wants it. Austin to Horges. 
We know we're in the power five. Every shot in that white arc, a Suncorp super shot worth two. The Thunderbirds, they can shoot from there. So can the Vixens. What can they do? Austin. With the big hands of Hannah Petty there, just saying, actually, I'm going to block your and vision. Wilson gets a hand there, Sterling. And a tip and chase from the Jamaican duo. <laughs> Nankerville. Mannix contesting every ball. Hall just wants it. She can shoot from here. We've seen it plenty of times before. She's actually sitting, in terms of her percentage, uh, second um, for the Su Suncorp Super Shots. And who's Georgie number one? Hodges, number one, Rani Samerson sitting on the bench there for the Vixens in terms of her percentage. Um, so both of these obviously spending time in different positions. Georgie Hodges, we've seen that wing attack, and Rani Samerson obviously. Lucy Austin, can she do it? Suncorp Super Shot. Look at her in her first game, 100% from the super shot and also I from the ones. I love seeing the courage from the youngsters to get, it, get out there and take the shots. And it says a lot about the team culture too, doesn't it? That they're not afraid to get out there, to have a crack. As Kira Austin, I'll show you. <laughs> You can hear the crowd here at John Payne Arena get excited when they can see a super shot. And don't forget that $100 is being donated as Georgie Horges has another go. Weston interrupts it with a good rebound. So for every Suncorp super shot, Suncorp are donating $100 to the Confident Girls Foundation. Just a little bit more incentive, but I have been noticing a lot of chat on Netball Twitter, and that's around, what a defender's goo. Maybe we need to get Suncorp to donate some intercepts. Money for intercepts, money for block shots. Shamira Sterling, she would rack up a few dollars. She definitely would, but the intercepts are giving the shooters the opportunity, aren't they? <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Kumwenda, an easy one. The Vixens take their lead to four. Just over a minute to play in this second quarter. Scores were even in the first quarter. The Vixens now leading by four. Austin across to Mundy. Not to be. Thunderbirds, what can they do? Over 50 seconds still. Plenty of time in this last second quarter. Too high, there's too much on it. The Vixens will get the ball back in attack. We and just see the miss and net points up there with Kamwenda leading the way. Vixens with three of those top positions. Al McDonald, our Telstra player to watch in the pre-match. She is having a solid game at centre. She definitely is. And she's had a lot of those changes happen around her. She's been that consistent, balanced, steady head in the centre role. Smothering defence from Mannix. Weston's been so impressive this season, although I talk her up and she gets a hell ball. But Maddox in, uh, Weston in defence with Maddox, that combination. Add in Olivia Lewis. And the clock is ticking down here. Lucy Austin, is she going to, oh, for a very long one with Joe Weston's arms. Right on the buzzer. Not to be for Lucy Austin. But she has been very impressive in this first half of netball here at John Kane Arena. The Vixens are leading by four. Tanya, I wanted to ask around, uh, you're used to getting a hell of a lot of ball from your defenders and we're probably not seeing as much as, as what you're used to from your defenders. So how do you go about getting a bit more turnover from the Vixens? They're, we know they're a really low turnover team. Yeah, look, look, they are. They're very much a possession-based team. Um, and, you know, it's about us really just... Oh, um, there you go. Well, yeah, there's one. Um, but, you know, we have to just apply pressure and then take our opportunities when they present. 
And what are you hoping to get from your mid-court? Uh, we've seen quite a few changes there, Tanya. What are you hoping, what are you asking from your mid court? Yeah, we're needing just to freshen up a little bit, you know. Um, it's been a big sort of couple of weeks, I suppose. So uh, we're really looking to get supply onto Circle Edge rather than off Circle Edge with the feed to make it obviously easier for, for feeding into Lucy. Well, let's how, see how this second half plays out. Thank you so much Cheers. for joining us, Tanya. Enjoy nice. the rest of the game. Thank you. Always so incredibly grateful that we do get to speak to the coaches. Not many coaches would let us talk to them during a game, especially when the pressure is on. If we have a look at some of the changes that are on the court for this second half, We've, we see Williams there in that centre bib. Oh, and straight away she gets a hand. She's like, Caitlin, I am here and I am ready to play. She definitely does. We've got. Petty there in at wing defence as well. As we see Kumwenda just with a nice one-handed take and a flick back in. There we see Taylor Wilson. She's got the ball in hand, tries to play quickly on their centre pass. One of the things that I really enjoy seeing about the Thunderbirds is they've cut, a lot of the players have come from training partners to then being part of the team, and they've really earned their spot. Yeah, they definitely, definitely have. And it's great to see the fact that they're graduating through the pathway. We haven't seen a lot of netball due to COVID in that those kind of the, the leagues that sit underneath SSN, unfortunately, the last couple of years. So it's really great to see that these players, when they are being given an opportunity, they're really stepping up and taking it with two hands. Pressure from the Thunderbirds. Nowhere for the Vixens to go. Sterling to Petty. Wilson goes long. They can't get it to her. Petty across to Sterling. And Wilson. The captain, Petty. Williams. I got them mixed up before. Taylor Williams. Takes the penalty. Finds Horges. Quick play. Horges wants it back. She takes a confident shot from Georgie Horges in this second half. And that's that great strong drive from the goal attack. It's going to mean that Joe Weston can't just sit back there and in a double defense on Austin. It's going to mean that Weston has to get back in there and, and really uh, defend her as well. Late challenge from Weston. Austin. There's a lot of Austins, Westons, <laughs> Wilsons, Williams. We'll get there. Watson to Austin to Weston. <laughs> they all are. Oh, straight out of court. Watson couldn't keep that one in. And the Thunderbirds are back into attack. Two goals the difference. Can the Thunderbirds bring it to within one? Petty, strong. Across to Wilson. Williams. Oh, and Mannix, there she goes. She's been putting that pressure on all first half, and she comes through with the goods. She definitely has, and she was in great front position there, and the ball just not quite placed far enough, um, which meant that the ball ended up with Emily Mannix. Maddie Brown, what are you noticing down the Thunderbirds' defence end? Well, I think they've obviously been trying to shut down that second phase. That's where they've been getting a few of those extra little gain balls. But you can see, obviously, the Thunderbirds shutting down that middle channel on the Vixens right now, trying to get them to do a lot of work out the front. Their patience is prevailing, though, and getting them right under the post, as we see. But I think we've talked about, obviously, Tanya Up said she wanted to see that applied pressure from her defence end, so they're going to have to continue to do it consistently. Great to try and get those turnover play. balls. Brilliant play by Eddie. They can't keep it, though. Thunderbirds through Petty. Nankavel. Austin outside the circle. Williams to Horges. Austin steps forward. And the first miss in general play for Austin. A stepping call against... Liz Watson. Petty flying down court. She struggles. She's oh. hurt herself. She's having to put the brakes on she looks quite okay. quickly. Just keep an eye on 
her injury there. West and through Mundy. And great fake from Mundy then. Just really committed that uh, Thunderbirds defender and opened up the space behind. When you talk about the fake from Hannah Mundy, is that is that to move the Thunderbirds defenders? Is that why you fake it? Uh, yeah, a lot of the time with the defence, you want to be covering that first ball, so that first attempt, that first drive that the um, that the attacker is making, and so if you can commit the defender to that first move, it quite often opens up the second move or the dodge from the attacker. No freight from Watson. She gives it straight to Kumwenda, who tries to lay it up. Comes off second best. As we're just getting the court wiped up, good to see we've got the mops in action this year. He's quite sweaty out there. <laughs> Sterling wanting to take matters into her own hands. Sterling and Wilson, the Jamaican combo. The umpire wants it reset. We'll see them go again. Sterling just going to run for it. I'm not quite sure. <laughs> just, <laughs> the power walk to <laughs> retrieve the ball. <laughs> if we look at the Nissan net points, look at the match leaders. It's all pink. The Thunderbirds are yeah. dominating. And Hannah, Hannah Petty coming through so strongly onto that ball. She couldn't control her feet with a little step there. If you're new to the Nissan net point system, it's pretty simple. You get. You get, if you've got positive stats, then you get a score. Negative stats, then you obviously lose some of those points. So at the moment, the Thunderbirds sitting top of the top five. And that swung quite quickly, hasn't it? So it must have been a few errors or a few really great plays from um, the Thunderbirds. We see Tipper Dwan there with the goal shooter bib on. And some uncharacteristic mistakes from the Vixens. You know, a stepping call, a hell ball throw over the sidelines, all having an effect on those scores. Porges steps in, little offload pass. We've been talking about this short, quick attack end between Horges and Dwan. Lucy Austin heads to the bench and we've got a fast attack end for the Thunderbirds. Let's see what happens. Mundy back to Western, just trying to find which avenue they can penetrate down court and not quite managing to get there. The defensive pressure from the Thunderbirds has stepped up. You can feel the momentum changing. Nankerville to Horges. She wants it again. Can she get it? No. Straight across to Williams. They're moving quick. Weston. Tried to get in the way, but Dwan makes that count. Nankville back to Horges. Weston, she's hunting. She wants the ball. She wants an opportunity. The Thunderbirds trying to keep it off them. Horges, Nankville across to Dwan. They're all on the one side of the court, opening it out. Maddox over the top. She can't get a hand to it. Williams, there they find Juan all on her own. A lot of work being done to get that goal through, though, wasn't there? And so Vixen's defence doing a pretty good job. And you know that when the Vixens call a HCF tactical timeout, the momentum has shifted. Definitely has a great start to this third quarter from the Adelaide Thunderbirds. They lead this quarter by one. Let's take a listen to Simone McInnes. So we have started to curve off on our moves, so that's about timing. So that timing and prelim work so that we're coming strong onto the ball and we're working with that ball moving. At the moment we've got one option. Right. So Hannah, really strong across that transverse, nice and definite and strong. And recognise we've got to dictate space more down in that goal circle. Okay. 
It's on the move, so especially if they're leading out, we block, hold them up, close down the space in that circle. Can you try You want one to go with that and block that in still? Have a feel for going yeah. with it, but yeah. get the hands over it yeah. and put that pressure and then read it from there. But we must have them slowing it down at the front, Teddy. Just slow that ball movement. We've got to get that hands yeah. over. Yeah. 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 We're getting ball. Do you want to go chip out to attack? Yeah. Just yeah. Yeah. down if it's on, yeah. give it. But yeah. keep it short, keep it fast. Right? Let's go. Let's go. It's on three. One, two, three. We spoke about the slower play from the Vixens in that first half, but you just heard Captain Liz Watson there. She wants it to be quick. So we look at this Harvey Norman replay, Kira Austin across to Kumwenda. And the safe hands of Kumwenda as Liz Watson gets us away for this second half. In centre, Hannah Mundy to wing attack. And a beautiful second phase there from Hannah Mundy, just getting that real depth close to circle edge. I wonder if this change, we, we will see the pace turned on with Liz in the centre. Let's cross down to Maddie Brown. What were you hearing from the Thunderbirds camp? Look, the Thunderbirds were talking about that defensive pressure and really shutting down that second phase in that middle channel. They asked for the goal is with it now that it's a moving circle, maybe to play some sides, Katie, and make sure that they're not just cutting off each other, that they've got multiple options. And for the centre court to do a little bit more work out the front so that when the goal is get it in and have an opportunity to shoot, they're not too tired. Austin steals that one off the Thunderbirds. And Williams impressively goes down no, the court. No she, call from the umpire. <laughs> no, she just let that one go. Vixen's back in possession. Bullet pass across the circle. And a little one over the top into Kira Austin. Great play by Kira Austin. She is owning the attack. Directing play, telling Mundy where to go, where she needs her. Straight up they go, over the top of Sterling. They've been so patient and not thrown any of those so far. So I wonder if a little bit of that frustration wears on or we heard Simone talk about the fact that there's only one option. So if they shut down those options, they might not have much other choice than to go over into Sterling's playground up there. Sterling, Wilson, they all go up for it, but Kumwenda ends up with the ball. Sharp shooting from Kumwenda. Williams to Nankerville. If you have a look at the last 10, the Vixens have got the last three in a row. But there was that momentum shift that happened prior to that with the Thunderbirds just putting on three prior to that. See this quick shooting circle play out. The power five. You heard the siren. Dwan wants it in that Suncorp super shot range across to Horges. She wants two. And the strong rebound from Mannix. This is the double-edged sword of having these two shorter players on. They've both got the firepower in that uh, Suncorp super shot range, but you lose some of that rebounding power from the tall players. Tipper Dwan, she's 178 centimetres. Georgie Hort just 172. So quite a short attack. And when you compare it to Emily Mannix and Joe Weston, both 188 plus. Gorgeous to Wilson. Goes straight up the middle to Williams. Where can they go? Across they go to Horges. They're moving the ball quickly. Dwan wants it back. Mannix all over it. And just that penalty that releases that pressure. That pressure was building. And she just opts to go over the top just for one. You can see the height mismatch there between the Vixens defenders and the Thunderbirds attackers. Mundy, she's out very quickly. Weston goes long to Mundy. And a held ball. So that's that shutting down those first couple of options. Nothing else coming for the Vixens. Williams tries to go to Hodges but finds Dwan. Flat, hard pass, straight in the air. And just that movement um, creates a little bit of confusion between the defenders as to which, uh, which attacker, whether they're going to switch or stay. Um, and we saw just then both of them ending up on, on Georgie Horgis and Tipper being under the post by herself. Just under three minutes to play. 
Dwan hangs on to it. Mannix, another penalty. That's her 13th for the game. So she is having, having a few penalties. Vixen's a highly penalised team. And last week, especially against Sunshine Coast Lightning, more penalties than what they're used to. Mundy has to go back to Weston. To Watson, Austin. Just drops it down. They try and find space. Wilson in front. But they get Kamwenda. Vixens extend their lead by three. Williams to Hoare just over the top. Risky, but it pays off. Back out they go to Petty. Gorgeous. They don't want to take it. Can they get it to Dwan? And the nice little screen set there by Georgie Horgis. Just protecting that space for the ball to go into for Dwan over the top. Strong pick up from Nankerville. Dwan. Suncorp, super shot. She says, I want it. I'll take it. I'll get it. Wilson. Can she keep it in? She can't. She did all the effort, but no one was there backing her up. Look at the sea of pink in this middle channel. We talk about the middle channel being the middle part of the court all the way down, and the Thunderbirds do not want Vixens to get the ball there. Across they go to Mundy. Patient play from the Vixens, and a little flick pass off to Kumwenda under the post. Smart shooter-to-shooter connection. We've Stop. seen it building over the season. <laughs> and just a two-goal lead for the Vixens with one minute to play. If we look at the shooting stats for the Vixens, Katie. Not bad for Kumwenda. Austin, you'd want to see that up. Yeah, and a couple of those misses for Kumwenda have actually been those attempted layups. So I would like to just see her settle herself and, and put the shots up as a, as a normal shot until she kind of feels that she's got the flow back <laughs> for those layups to come. One goal, the difference here at John Kane Arena. The Vixens without their captain, Kate Maloney. The Thunderbirds without their star goal shooter, Lamise Potgita. And a good, good tip and chase there from the rebounds. We see Sterling and Wilson leading the rebound stats, both of them in the top five of the league. Um, so the Vixen shooter's doing a good job to get some of those rebounds. Ten seconds on the clock. Can the Thunderbirds score? They go long. They couldn't. Oh, they can't get it to Dwan. And what a third quarter that has been. The Thunderbirds winning that quarter by two goals. The Thunderbirds, they want this win. They've already lost two games this season by one goal. Do you learn from that? I would think that they definitely would learn from that and they would know, they would have done scenarios, they would have, uh, you know, played the clock, they would have all played out all of those scenarios. So I, I think that given, you know, recent memory, those two, two one goal losses, I think they definitely would have learned from those. Mannix goes flying. The Thunderbirds, they've stuck with their quick attack end. Porges, Dwan, Nankerville. Vixens in attack through Mundy, back to Weston. Watson, safe hands. She lands on the edge of the circle. Try, Kumwenda tries to get rid of it, but Sterling finds a way. And Wilson's in control. Petty tries to go long, no options for her. Again, looks long, takes a drive. Gorgeous. Over the top of the hands. And another big effort from the hands over. Creating a turnover. Oh. Jo Weston, the lady with the ball in her hands right now. She's been impressive all season. She definitely has. She's. I, I guess goes under the radar a little bit, doesn't she? She's sitting here at the moment. 13 missing net points, two rebounds. 
and one intercept, one deflection, but it doesn't really showcase the amount of work and pressure that she's creating out there. Look at her hands over the she, pass. She does. She is. She's one of those people when when you know you're coming up against her, even at training, <laughs> you just think, oh, I'm in for it today because she grinds. She's always right there. Um, she makes she makes you have a really hard day at the office when you're playing against her. <laughs> and a great little second phase there from Kira Austin. Just a nice little change of angle. Watson pops it over to Quinwenda, but Sterling gets her hands and mucks it up. An unlucky offside there from Williams. They almost had that as a game. Oh, oh Wilson. The Thunderbirds defence end have come alive. Nankerville resets, slows down the pace. You see our general play turnovers on screen. The Thunderbird 17, the Vixens, uncharacteristically sitting there on 20. It's definitely gone up in that third quarter. Nankerville to Horges. Horges over the top of Mannix's hands. Really great hands over from Mannix just then also blocking the vision as well as getting hands over over the shot and the ball Mannix with 32 decent net points to her name she might be high on penalties but her pressure from that first half oh Sterling thank you very much brilliant block on the shot from Shamira Sterling and a really great timing on that she waited for the first ball, the first That'll defender lose. went up, and Sterling from that position just launched at the shooter. A double defense between Wilson and Sterling, a distraction method that often shooters don't notice. <laughs> Sneaky little defenders. Absolutely. Horges for one. Two goals the difference. Mundy to Kumwenda, easy play from the Vixens. And this is where they're struggling that little bit, just to get it into shooting position. That's much better from the Vixens attackers, splitting those defenders, not allowing them to work together. Williams starts off the Thunderbirds. Kira Austin, she has snuck in already, two intercepts to her name. More than any defenders on the court for the Vixens. Here we go, two for Austin, two for Wilson. Liz Watson. Just finding her, finding her way to the top of that circle again with a really nice speed. Harvey Norman, a replay. Kira Austin just sneaks in there. Talk about sneaky defenders. The attackers can be sneaky defenders too. And don't we love it when they do? Get involved like that. Weston, look at the Thunderbirds defense. They're forcing them wide. Austin breaks it open. Up the middle with and that quick ball speed. Penalty against Sterling. Steady, steady from Kumwenda. The Vixens take their lead to five. Wilson helps out with the centre pass. And Petty goes long. Can she find one? She does. Just spotted that little bit of space in the back. Patient play from the Thunderbirds. They're not moving the ball overly fast. No, they're not. But they, um, I really like Maddie mentioned earlier about the, um, the shorter shooters wanting to play sides. So the way that they play sides is actually, it doesn't matter who's the one that, you know, if the ball's coming down the left-hand side of the court, the player that's on that side will be the one that leads. And the other one replaces the shooter um, at the post or is that drive heading towards the post. So having a look at these two, um, they're actually switching sides too, so it's not necessarily, um, you know, you take left and I'll take right. Both of them, um, you know, reading that play really nicely. Dwan, what can she do? She swings it across, she wants it back. So as you saw then, Dwan come around the top of the circle, so that meant Horge just stepped back. 
to allow that to happen. Yeah, so just that obviously you're wanting to to split those defenders up, one play on one side of the court, one play on the other side of the court, and knowing who's who's on leads at which time. Brilliant feed, Nankerville to Dwan on that baseline. You can't do much about that with that timing. Poor just pushing her way through underneath Weston to get the center pass. Poor just, just in the background on her own. They go to the top. Dwan over Mannix. And Dwan doing a really good job. Obviously, with those two shorter shooters, they lose that firepower and, and Generally, the main, um, you know, shooter that's shooting the bulk of that volume, Dewan's actually done a pretty good job at stepping in into that role. Al and McDonald enters the court in centre. Maddie Brown. Yeah, I think Al McDonald's a great addition right now. She's going to provide a little bit more zip. She's been sitting, watching it. I think it's quite interesting with the Adelaide Thunderbirds attack. They're wanting to get close for that short one ball. The best thing they can do is just continue to tick over that scoreboard pressure to just try and stick close to the Vixens. Vixens last week were tested on that scoreboard and started to have some uncharacteristic turnovers. So can, just like that, the Thunderbirds capitalise on these little ones. Sterling goes flying. What can the Thunderbirds do? What have they learned from their close matches in the past? Nankerville, McDonald. Austin oh, with a third! <laughs> what incredible defensive play from Kira Austin. She sneaks through. Can the Vixens make this count? Kumwenda gives it back to Mundy. Across. She drills it. And what a workload from Kira Austin. You can see her taking some big breaths in there. That's because she's working so hard on defense and having to put those drives in there in attack. And leading the intercept stat, which is not often you see a goaler, but she's also returning from an ACL reconstruction. She's been named in the Australian Diamond squad for the Commonwealth Games. She's putting up her hand saying, you need to pick me. <laughs> Vixens leading by two. Thunderbirds are coming. Eddie to Watson. Double play. Nice little up the middle there from Kumwenda. Really love it when a, when a shooter takes that middle space because it means um, that they can utilise both sides of the court and the defenders actually, um, you know, they can't kind of just sit on one side of the court. They need to actually shift around. It makes it really hard for the defenders when you use that middle channel. Sure does. As Weston pulls in the rebound. Just over five minutes to play in this final quarter. The super shot will be in play. Only two scored so far this game. It hasn't been used a lot. What will happen in this last five minutes as the power five is in play now? Austin. The Vixens all over one side of the court. Mundy opens it up. Austin, does she want to take it? Of course she does. And that's two Suncorp super shots for Kira Austin with the center pass to follow. The intercept queen, the super shot queen. <laughs> no pressure. Weston, there she is again. Wilson gets a hand to it. Oh, and a great chase from Nankerville there. Just backing up her teammate. Steady play from Nankerville. Tippet one. Lines it up, but opts for the one. Safe play by the Thunderbirds. Is that what you expect from them at the moment? Well, they're going to have to make their run at some point in the, uh, in the next couple of minutes. So, But yes, given that it was their centre pass, quite often we're seeing teams that they will want to bank the one, make sure of it, and then potentially off their centre pass, take the two point, which is a bit more risky, but they've already banked the one. Are all players aware when it's their centre pass next? 
you would hope that the majority of them are. <laughs> um, yes, so, you, I mean, some players obviously may not. They may be too focused on what's happening with their own players, but you would hope that the majority of the players, as we see Weston just come up with a turnover, are aware when it's their centre pass next. Dixon's safe pass to Eddie. Watson wants to go forward, gets it again, up to Kamwenda. We haven't seen it much over the top of Sterling. Precise passing from Liz Watson. Goal assist, no surprises, Liz Watson leading the way. Kira Austin doing a huge amount of work and the circle feeds Watson, Mundy. And obviously the, the Thunderbirds, because they have the, um, they've shifted around their positions quite a lot. Kumwenda. It, it's harder to be leading a stat when you're, when you're getting shifted around a bit, isn't it? That's right. Thunderbirds, they're running out of time. Eddie really standing up in this final quarter. As we see Kumwenda shoots to the top of the table of the missing net points. Isn't that interesting, though, that the two, Kumwenda and Sterling, who are playing on each other, are the two that are leaving? <laughs> and Kira Austin, who's taking all the intercepts. <laughs> McDonald keeps it in. Not quite. You can hear the crowd. They know Vixens are leading the way as there's just over two minutes to play in this final quarter. Dixon's leading by six. Across to Eddie. Kumwenda's out of the circle. Quick play back to Mundy. That reset back to the line. Kumwenda all on her own. And Sterling just trying to make something happen. Coming out of that circle. But Kate Eddie had the vision. The youngster, Lucy Austin, is back on the court for the Adelaide Thunderbirds. You can just see her there on screen. The Thunderbirds need to mix it up. <laughs> Mundy finds Kumwenda. They're confident. The Vixens are confident now. They're playing with so much more urgency than they have been. They definitely are. And I think that'll be a good settler for, for the Vixens. They have withstood that little comeback for the Thunderbirds. What can the Thunderbirds do? They will need to light up that super shot range now. Austin wants it. She puts her hand up. Gorgeous. And potentially Austin on the court. Oh, let's see if she can sink this super shot. Being double defended. And it works in the Vixens' favour. Weston up with it. Mannix back to Watson. Vixens find the space in the middle. Under a minute. Watson, Austin, finds Kumwenda, but Sterling comes she, up with the goods again. She always finds a way. Mannix, one on one. Austin, not confident. They want to go for two. Gorgeous. So, Sub super shot. So accurate Horvath. from there. <laughs> 20 seconds to go. Just too little, too late. What will the Vixens do in this last 10 seconds? Kira Austin. She's had a brilliant game. Offside, it's a pass from here. Kumwenda over the top. Are they aware of the score and the time? And you can hear the crowd. They are very happy with this Melbourne Vixens win.